What's going on y'all, I'm the Home Slice, a Sentai Hyperion. Just recently, I posted a video showcasing my recreation of the Royal Pools raid encounter from Destiny 2's Leviathan. In that video, I talked briefly about how I successfully used Halo 5 Forge to replicate the mechanics of the encounter, and then showed how 6 Halo community members took on the challenge for the first time ever. Well, in this video, I want to appease the curious minds. Many people had questions about how I was able to use Halo 5 to accomplish some fairly complex operations like the one in the previous video, and I'm more than happy to share. In fact, what I'll be doing here is not only breaking down how it all works, I'll be doing so in a way that basically anyone can understand. If you enjoy learning about game mechanics or how things work, you'll probably find this video interesting, even if you don't like Destiny or Halo. So without further ado, let's kick this off. Like with any project, before we start we need to understand our goal. The Royal Pools encounter has two key phases, which I call the Plate Phase and the Damage Phase. In the Plate Phase, four players must stand on a set of plates in order to move a chain. The chain moves back if the plate is not stood upon, and to make things a little harder, standing on the plate will slowly kill the player unless they are protected by a buff. This buff only lasts a little while, and is only obtainable by going to the center of the map. If the players successfully move their chains to completion, they then all rush to the middle to start damage phase, which is actually straightforward. They must blow up a series of targets all within a time frame. If they do so, they win. If they don't, they uh... They don't. I moved into Halo 5 to start work on the plate phase. The first major issue is that Halo 5 doesn't have support for progress bars, and especially ones that can fill and drain over time. This function is key to the whole mechanic of the plate phase. It was here I applied my background in engineering to create a solution. While Halo 5 Forge doesn't have progress bars, it does have a competent physics engine and zone-based messaging. What I decided to do was alter gravity around an object to move it between two zones. One zone meant the progress was at 0% and the other side meant 100. At first, I tried to imitate the vertical motion of the chain, but I realized two things. One, the forge canvas didn't have a high enough vertical ceiling to support the distance that would have been covered over the course of the phase. And two, in Destiny, chances are that chain isn't actually moving, at least not physically. I reckoned the chain we see moving in Destiny is actually just a static object playing an animation to make it look like the chain is moving. Lucky for me, I also have objects that feature animation. I changed the chain to an energy beam that would flip on and off as the plate dictated. I used a separate animation object to give the activation sequence a little more life. I then changed the movement direction of our object to be horizontal to take advantage of the ultra-wide spacing on the forge canvas. With this little proof of concept in place, I could move to refinement and timing. It was now time to figure out just how fast the object was moving along our progress bar. We need to calculate velocity. That being said, there's actually a lot about the physics engine I don't know, like the object weight, density, and especially the coefficient of friction for the floor. All very important things when it comes to calculating velocity and acceleration. It's okay though, we apply engineering once again to solve our issue. While I may not know the friction force numerically, I do know it at least exists, as the object doesn't simply slide indefinitely if touched at all. Knowing that there is a force, I know I can reduce its effects by, by reducing the weight of the object and using the shape more prone to slipping. With that being said, I switched the block to a cylinder, as, theoretically, only a single series of points on the cylinder should ever be in contact with the floor at any given point in time. This is a major improvement over a flat surface. Acceleration was our next big question. Luckily, the gravity volumes effectively accelerated the object to a steady speed almost instantly, so I made the executive call to say the acceleration is instant. I then tested the speed of the rolling cylinder and found it could travel 128 forge units in about 6 seconds, which translates to about 21 units per second. I wanted the total time to complete a plate with no breaks to be a minute and a half, aka 90 seconds. 
So, at a rate of 21 units per second, our progress bar had to be 1920 units long. I built a full scale model to test it out and bit bop bam I had successfully created a working two way progress bar in Halo 5 using basically just physics. The big downfall was just how many pieces this mechanic consumes. How many? Well, with all the gravity modifiers, invisible walls, and etc., all four plates eat up 328 objects, which is just about 20% of my total object budget. Luckily, this was our biggest sink. From here, I worked out a cool animation to play for when the plate had been successfully completed, and then I moved on to our damage phase. While Royal Pools itself doesn't have a boss with a health bar, it has several targets with their own health bars. But guess what Halo doesn't have? Health bars. So yet again my method would have to be physical, but not quite the same way as before. Lucky for me, the boss here won't be regaining any health, so I only have to move the bar in one direction. I also don't need to move the bar continuously, only when damage is dealt. I set up a series of invisible targets that all send the same message when destroyed. This message tells the bar to move just a tiny bit one way. Once the bar was fully out of view, I used a boundary to send a signal saying it was all over. This was actually really convenient because it allows me to end the game at a singular certain point, rather than trying to give each target its own health bar like in Destiny. There would have been no proper way to support that in Halo. Unlike Destiny, my version does have a central boss, or at least something that represents one. Rather than him idly hanging out, I wanted to create a series of damage states to show how the players were actually winning. I use effects objects strung out over a chain of timers to simulate damage to the boss. In the final version, I even gave it an epic finale, the best I could at least. The rest is history. I went into a fresh map, implemented my proofs of concepts, and built a fleshed out working version. One major thing about this project is that I really wanted it to be an immersive experience. Part of immersion in games is music, and while Halo does have some music emitters for Forge, they're not universal, they're limited by distance. No, you have no permission to use my voice. Alright, I'll be adding a filter over you. <laughs> I approached the very talented Aaron Weatherford to compose two brand new musical pieces for this raid encounter. I'm thinking of like a single track, right? Yeah. And it's building and building and building. What if it's not long enough and it doesn't get to, you know, the right intensity at the right time? Oh god. <laughs> You might recognize Aaron as he's the mind behind the music in my series Huntress and several other projects on my channel. If you want to hear his work for this raid or in general, be sure you go check out his YouTube channel ASAP. As you might have noticed, I skipped a lot of the really nitty gritty talk about the scripts themselves. One, for the sake of time, but two, basically because I already have a video about how it all works. Nearly every script method I use to make a Destiny raid encounter in Halo can be learned by watching my video about the three scripting tricks every forger should know. These three methods are extremely important for sending messages, activating power channels, and accomplishing tasks in Forge, and they're actually really easy to pick up. The video was probably just linked in a card above a few seconds ago, so go check that out too. I want to end this video by saying thanks to all the people who checked out the first video. It received amazing reception, and several members of the raid design team and level designers from Bungie even gave me props for the project. It's extremely humbling and hype inducing for me and I'm excited to bring you more cool content in the future. That's going to do it for this video. Leave a comment below on your thoughts. If you still have questions, feel free to ask and until next time, I'll catch you guys later.